Uh, episode six, the Nasty Work Podcast. Me, Nate Russell, your host, Luke Frazier. Hey. At what point are we going to stop telling the number of like the episodes? Are we going to be like episode 915? Well, when we start forgetting what how many fucking episodes do we have, and I start forgetting what it is. For what do you mean forgetting what it is? The number well, or like, like what, what we're doing? Because it it's pretty obvious what we're doing. I know what we're doing, but what number it is? Six. It is six. Six. What is that? Like six, six, six God? Oh. I'm not super into that personally. but We know you are not a fan of Drake. And no. I mean, a lot of people aren't as of late, but that's fine. I, I, I was a big Drake hater when it wasn't cool. That is true. Before the, when I was going against the grain. That is that is honestly true. What was the first thing you heard from Drake that you were just like, I can't? You know, it's, it's, it's one of those things. We were talking about this earlier. Like, ska music isn't objectively bad. It's the white people who listen to ska music. You know, it's like Drake's music is objectively good. I just kind of hate the people who really love it and stand it. <laughs> a Drake stand, that's so nasty, yeah, bro. Yeah, it's always like the most basic ass, dumb ass person, you know, with like no internal dialogue. None. Not even a fucking hint of an internal dialogue. Zero. Not a hint of self awareness. Mm -mm. Just like, you know, like, oh, sorry. <laughs> I told you my phone wasn't going to go off. <laughs> I mean, just, just put the little thing off. Uh -huh. But, I mean, that's that's honestly super valid. I, I kind of agree. I mean, then again, his shit kind of bop, though. His shit bop. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it does. Uh, all right, fine. Whatever. Well, tell me about your fucking trip to Seattle, bro. Um, It was fine. It was fine? It was fine. You weren't scared at all? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You weren't. I mean, your op, your no, biggest op is yeah, out it was, there. It was actually pretty. Uh, uh, it was pretty liberating. You know, it's like immersion therapy. Oh, mm, mm. were you in like a remote? We area? were. We went to Whidbey Island, which is like an hour north, and you have to take a ferry there. Oh, and it's like shit. mad rural and beautiful. Yeah, it was sick. That's fucking sick. But no, nah, there was. I mean, there wasn't like a. I didn't see anything really overtly besides like a couple tourist things overtly like. Sasquatch, you know, related. So it's like I come. I don't think that's like his main territory. I mean, you see how the man booked a vacation on an island in the Northwest, not on the mainland, away from the op. Oh yeah. Um, I went to Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to tell it's us. It's a very. I mean, I don't know. It's like nobody there was hot. Nobody dresses good. You um, know, like what? What do you want out of a city besides that? In my opinion, there wasn't like, you know, there wasn't really anywhere to shop. Went to a couple of stores that were like nice, but like nothing I haven't seen before. Food. What's, what was the it food was, situation? It was, it was good. What was it like seafood and shit? A lot of seafood. I don't really eat seafood. So I was like kind of. How many white supremacists did you see? I don't know. It was hella Indian people. Really? Yeah. But That's it's like interesting. Shit, you know, it was a very diverse city, which was cool. There okay. was a lot less white people than I was expecting. Yeah, because on I'm, that island, though, I didn't see a single fucking person of color besides Aurora. Of course, dude. I fucking watched this movie from, it came out like the mid 2010s or something, and it's about like a punk band that goes out in the middle of the woods. Train and spotting? No, that's in Scotland, dude. Proceed Punks it. that go out in the woods and they play like a punk show at this bar, and it turns out to be a fucking skinhead spot. And then they're like, they're like fighting to survive inside of like the skinhead bar and How shit. How big is the bar? It's a pretty big. It was a pretty big bar, and you, you get to hear uh, what's what's the what's the captain Jean Luc Picard, uh, Patrick uh, Ewing. No, what's not Swayze? No, dude. Oh my. Patrick God. Stewart. Patrick is it? Patrick? Yes, I think it is. Patrick Stewart. Yeah. He says uh, he says the N word hard R in the movie with a British accent or no? No, oh, no, okay. no, no. Not a British accent. Straight up Northwest American. It was. Brutal. I was like, what I, am think, I, I think as a director, you know, anytime you can make a white actor say like a slur on camera to make them really earn their keep, it's probably like, you know, it's like, it's like, well, we might not even use it, but let me have you say it just to like <laughs> make you earn this salary. <laughs> oh my God, dude. <laughs> I would be writing in stuff I know they would not want to say just to like kind of fuck with them. As we observe, the the one of the most malicious perpetrators of this, uh, dude, why am I forgetting these white actors' names? Uh, There's a lot of them. There are quite a few. Uh, Pulp Fiction, the director. Tarantino. Tarantino oh, he loves, loves it. that shit. He loves it. But he's like word. racist. 
Is he? He fucking wrote himself saying that shit like three different movies. Three different movies. No yeah. reason. Are you, you going to tell me he's not in defeat next? Notorious fucking foot guy. Notorious hard R sayer. What do you mean? What, what are you guys? Yeah. Wait, are you guys big Tarantino stands? But that's of just thumbs down that he, we don't like it. I uh, mean, we don't like Tarantino. Yeah, big thumbs down. What's the lore behind him liking feet? He's a big foot guy. That's like a that's like a known thing. Apparently, he like like I think he was like he would like write scenes where like Uma Thurman's feet would be out so he could like you know like film on the show. Oh, like the wiggle your big toe. Yeah, and the close up on he, the toes. She probably, like, gotta, she probably wears like a twelve in men's. You gotta spread. He's probably em. loving that shit. You do got a big ass foot. I know. I remember that scene. Wiggle your big toe. I was like, "Why?" It didn't have to be that close yeah, up he's on probably the, like, <sighs> on the big. <laughs> I'm glad he wasn't mic'd up. Hold on, we got to do another take. Can you spread them a little one, bit? One more. <laughs> Are they stinky? <laughs> how do you? You know, it's a, that's a pretty common fetish. Uh-huh. Um, and I always wonder, like, how do? How does that like start? I think like most fetishes, uh, miss miss uh, alignment of yeah. the neurons in your okay. brain. Like I think like a P thing is pre- could pre- could be pretty easy to like fall into. Like someone like like you're hooking up with a chick and she pees on you, you know, like the first time because you're both like kids. I feel like that would be like reasonable to see that happening, but like. <laughs> <laughs> At what point does a foot come into play? Bro, what are you saying? <laughs> I'm just <laughs> musing about what could happen easily or not. Oh my god, dude, what? Um, I feel like a natural pro- the natural progression maybe isn't like no uh, one's the like, next. No one's just breaking you off a foot job the first time you when you're like 11 years old. I feel like. Uh, why does it have to be 11? That's what like, happened to you? That's when people start <laughs> fucking. Uh, or like at least sucking. Oh my god, dude. Um. <laughs> I have so many questions that I'm going to take offline because this is not an appropriate conversation yeah, for our audience. Bro, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I don't think, like, like, there's so many other things you could be into first. Like, before P, you could be into, like, how a girl's hair looks. No, but I'm just saying, like, how does that become a fetish? I don't know. And it's know. because I would have... <laughs> I have no fucking idea, dude. I don't think that I'm being super unreasonable about this. I think, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Let me explain myself here. All right. Keep talking, man. <laughs> I don't think I should. Keep talking. First of all, let me fucking... <laughs> I don't have a pee fetish, for the record. But it's like, I just feel like it would be easy for that to, like, happen accidentally, like, for someone's first sexual experience, is what I'm saying. Oh, I don't have I have nothing uh, to say on that. Whatever. I have nothing to say on that because I mean I feel like that's a very advanced fetish. You got to get the shit. I mean, it's gross as shit. It's nasty, nasty stuff. What the fuck? If that happened to me the first time that I ever had sex, I would be like, "This shit is whack. This girl peed up on me. I'm not with this shit." And then you know, 20 years later, you're getting peed on. You're like thinking about it. Yeah. The next thing you know, you're a director, and you're like, "How about you pee? uh, Make it loud." (laughs) <laughs> I want to talk his fried chicken. <laughs> Girl, you got a heavy stream. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't either. I'm just purely speculating. That is a that is a lot of speculation. I mean, like we we might have to like ask. We might have to ask someone that like might if, actually. If you have know. a pee fetish, you can DM us from a burner page and let us know how you got into it. Oh, you you know we, we will use it in the next podcast. You know, someone that has a pee fetish that got so many burner pages. Yeah. Burner page culture is nasty work right there. You got to shuck and jive, you know what I mean? I feel like there was a there was a time when, like, and I think you know this, where, like, every person had, like, a burner page, and all those burner pages, like, there was, like, a burner page ecosystem on Instagram. And you could kind of, like, get, I was, like, kind of on the periphery, and I would kind of see into it and be like, this is, these people are very broke, was <laughs> kind of my <laughs> first thought. What's up? It felt like, like, Stanley Kubrick's, like, eyes wide shut, like, community where we all just... Yeah, like, every, like, fashion person I know or any, like, influencer had, like, a burner page. And, like, you would, like, find one, and they if you knew them well, they'd, like, let you follow it. And then you'd be like, oh, like, 
and then you see all these other people commenting, you, but you can kind of start speculating who these people commenting were, and like, yeah, and like, oh, I know who these fucking people are, and then you're like, oh shit, this is so dusty. Like, oh, a glance into the life of the rich and famous. I had no idea that this the, was going. The on. people po- poisoning is rich and famous, not <laughs> anyone. No one, none of those people were rich. I will fucking <laughs> the say the people that. that look rich and they're kind of famous. I guess. Yes, exactly. Fair. The fair. the uh, behind the scenes of the blue checks is, I think, probably more of a accurate you know way to say it i also really wanted to bring up the fact that guys i'm really proud to say that i finally kicked my (laughs) weed cart habit i'm a week and a half clean of weed carts uh shout outs to our our close friend our homegirl that got me hooked you're a demon man why you always gotta say people's (laughs) fucking name i gotta edit this shit out bleep them yeah it's annoying it's like and then i'm like it is it is it is it was you. It was yeah. you. I mean, I, I have a bunch of carts. I, I just never really hit them. They kind of give me anxiety. Dude, they get me so high and so scared. They like, would be in this bitch toasted when I was living down the hall, and he'd come in, and he I can never tell when he's high. He doesn't, like, look stoned. So he'd be like, I'm just, like, so stoned. And then the only way you can tell is he's watching some fucking anime about, like, a basketball player who becomes, like, a dragon or some <laughs> shit. Like, <laughs> that's not really my shit. I want to watch some like yeah, he's actually shit. a god from the stars. <laughs> I'm like, dog, I'm like, I need something to take I'm me away a because ass man watching this shit. This I is fucking, crazy. I hit the cart and then I start getting scared and I start thinking about real life events That's why and I like the real world. pop, bro. I I get high and I start thinking about every fucking mistake I've ever made <laughs> and I start psychoanalyzing myself and it's fucked up. I used to, you know, it didn't used to be like that. I started smoking pot when I was what, like eleven. Probably smoked a lot of shit happened to you while you were that was a very formative year for you. Well that not the what we were talking about earlier didn't happen to me for the fucking record. Sure. And yeah, we started smoking pot when I think I was like eleven. Yeah, it was, it was the boys and girls club when I was in seventh grade. Shout out Miss she bought us airplane bottles. <laughs> <laughs> she bought us a, a bowl off the internet. <laughs> she was sick. And uh I smoked pot probably every day pretty much from when I was eleven until I was 25 or 26 and um I fucking smoked some weed in Paris you know like that European weed especially 10 years ago was like I'm not I guess it was like 10 years ago was that so strong it, it had some it like wasn't fully weed you know like I had a really bad panic attack and I never really been able to smoke pot ever since yeah we used to smoke and go to little Mexico and Richmond and shit yeah, and like hang hard, out we yeah. play fucking fallout three it was like I had no worries or concerns Maybe it's my life got too serious you know I think that's what like happens you start like really clocking world events maybe you're more tapped into your finances you get high you're like oh my god I don't have a 401k my future is smoked yeah yeah like, you're like reading I I, th- that's, that's, I think smoking pot is a children's pursuit. It really is. Yeah. It really uh, is. Yeah. When we lived on that spot on Orchard Street, I was hitting the pen one night, and I just, like, got into this entire hole about, like, like a global conflict, and I was like, oh, oh shit. Didn't you, oh, yeah, Nate ordered... It was right when the Ukraine um, war started, and Nate ordered... Uh, the pills that you take for to stop radiation poisoning, iodine pills. Yes. And they sent us a copy of No Man's Sky for the <laughs> for, for the weed instead. Yeah. <laughs> so we were kind of, we would have been fucked if, uh, <laughs> if there was a nuclear war. I ordered it. I completely forgot that I even ordered it. The box comes like a week later. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I open up like No Man's Sky. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck yeah. is this shit? I lost my weed. I would have played it. It's fun. Uh the switch oh it was no, for the switch. switch same shit yeah whatever but the portable weed yeah dude i'm off i'm off the weed i will say however though that it it's me sans weed is like very aggressive very like time sensitive i'm very like like what are we do- what is happening what are we doing like where are people at like we need to yeah i kind of things that forward. we were texting earlier in the week that's like grrr, i'm like very like is on it good? Yeah, I'm like I'm like on the computer, like actually doing like real work and getting things actually done. Yeah. And it f- kind of it feels good, but I am sorry if I'm like a little bit more aggro, guys. It's fine. All right. Well. I don't think it matters to anyone watching this. It's mainly just like me and like a couple other people. <laughs> Y'all will live. You and you know your multitude of hoes. All right. See, <laughs> that's that's not true. That's, I'm only here for you, baby. I don't love that. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
<laughs> what else do we got here? Oh, uh, what? Uh, what? What are you gonna say? No, 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 no. I, I, I said that you were gonna. I was gonna say that you wanted to say something. We wanted to talk about something. I earlier. do. What? So we were in Seattle, and mm-hmm. the, the Space Needle there, and they're like, "Oh, they built it for the World's Fair." And then, like, you know, obviously, like the Eiffel Tower was built for the World's Fair. When was the last time there was a World's Fair, and why did they stop doing them? Hmm. Uh, I, I love a fair and a carnival. For the record, I um. When was the I last like, World's Fair? I don't know. Can you fact check that? Yeah, somebody looked it up. I was going to look up. it up, and I forgot. I got busy. Yeah, because it's like, it's like I don't even know. The Space Needle seems like not that old. It's like the 60s or some shit. Right? They're probably just like doing it, and it just like, it has no motion anymore. People are like, I don't want this World Fair bullshit. Like, what the fuck? I got a fair. Y'all got I a fair. We got a fair the, at home. The internet. We got a fair at home, bro. The world became unfair. Huh? They had one in Dubai in 2022. That oh. shit was probably a shit show. <laughs> Do you know how many fucking imported laborers probably died building that thing? What? The last one on U.S. soil was in 1984. Where? New Orleans. Ooh, mm, that, that sounds was probably fun. sick. That sounds fun. Katrina probably fucked up whatever they built for it. What did they even do at the World's Fair? What was the thing? I'm thinking like Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla. Yeah, that, they're, t- they're showcasing new bulbs. stuff and shit. Yeah, like this is a this is some snake oil you can put in your hair. It'll make it more full. Really? Uh, I, that's what I heard. Oh shit! That is what I fucking heard. Yeah. So I, I was thinking about World's Fair. I don't think there's actually that much to chew on with that. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and apologize. <laughs> But, <laughs> you know, the, the, the thing is, I'll have these ideas for a topic, you know, for this. And, like, we'll usually kind of get through them before we even get on camera. And so there's not a lot to get through. <laughs> Sorry. Fair enough. World's fair enough. World's right? Is that what you're getting at? Oh, yeah, that? that's, yeah, it's good stuff right yeah, there. That was like, yeah, learn from, the, learn from the best. Learn from the best. He did. Learn from the best. Didn't you want to say something about what were you guys talking about the... The kid Jupiter or something, something about the archival kid. <laughs> I don't really want to talk about this because again, it's going to take 13 seconds to talk about. All right. But just how mainly Little Jupiter, which is like the first archive like mood board page, has just become like paid advertisement for like shitty like drop ship like Instagram brands like and it'd be like it like at you know bullshit.com fucking it just dropped their newest heat collection and it's just like a picture of something you know, it's, I don't know. the thing about like drop shipping culture and like business like academy culture is that i mean the thing i really hate about it is that i always miss the wave to start like making money off of it you should it's not too late for you to get on amazon <laughs> Amazon via Amazon uh, 3PL or uh, 3PL like like a fucking third party shipper like I'm always like whenever I see it by the time I realize that it's happening it's already just like all across the breadth of the internet yeah yeah I'm like that's a sweet play because the play is really the courses it's not actually doing it it's the fucking courses we got to think of something like that dude well you know I think I think what's important to realize about a business course like that is you know, the entrepreneur is really given their time and that's, that's the value add. So when I do something like that, you know, <laughs> it's, you can't really put a price on my time. What's sweet about those things also is that they have like the crazy tiers, like, like you got the silver circle, then you got the gold circle, and then you got the diamond circle, then you got the platinum circle and the platinum circle. You got to spend 20 K to spend 15 minutes with Luke once a month. You'd be so lucky to, anyone would be lucky to have that. <laughs> so, so true. So true. That's I mean, why my life is so rich. I would love to like actually like do that. Someone's like, yo, it's like, yo, it's like your sister comes up, they're like, yo, that dude from your platinum circle, like it's time for your Zoom, and you're like, yo, this motherfucker paid twenty thousand dollars for this time. Like, <laughs> fuck. like this is crazy. And then you have to like you have to listen to someone whose decision making is that fundamentally flawed, where they think spending twenty k is worth that, and like try to convince them not to be fucking stupid. You know, like they're like, well. Uh, my 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 mattress drop shipping company is not doing so hot. <laughs> you're like, well, uh, time's running out here. I gotta. Well, what's sweet about it is the first 15 minutes could just be. Look, like, we're doing an introduction like, first. Doing, we're doing bro? a little what's touch up? base first, yeah. right? Like, hey, how you? How are you? Yeah, well, you know what I mean. And then, like, we're gonna get into the next. We're gonna get into real business next month. I think any good therapist good? probably does kind of the similar thing where they spend. You know, the first 30 minutes kind of just like shooting the shit. And then they're like, oh, okay. Well, it seems like you're angry. Why don't you tell me about that? <laughs> you know? And he's like, he's like, uh, 
We're up on time. We're up on time. Yeah, we're up I mean, on time. You, I think the real play as a shrink is probably to convince someone that they have like something that's like arguably untreatable, like borderline personality disorder. You know? <laughs> so you can just be like, the only way to really treat it is to keep talking about it, I guess. You know, like this, you know, it, it's real. It's a real diagnosed thing, but the, the symptoms are just so complex, you know, like. Mm -hmm. It's just it seems like such a joke. Yeah, yeah. We gotta we gotta try a lot of different uh types of medication. See, I think like you don't even prescribe the medication. You just gotta be like you gotta give them like like just talk to them. You just talk to them. Yeah. That's like it. Yeah. All right, well. Like a real shrink, a psychologist can't prescribe medicine. Really? No. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right about that. But then what's what's the difference between a, a, a psychologist a psychiatrist can prescribe medicine. Okay. Okay, what was your dad? He was a psychologist. But didn't he deal with like the courts and shit mostly? Yeah, exactly. Damn. If I was a psychiatrist, I would be like, you know, especially if it was like the early 2000s, I'd be like, um, what you need is 240 milligrams of Oxycontin every day. <laughs> <laughs> and just get that kickback and buy a Corvette. <laughs> You're getting a vet? I would get a vet. Like yeah. a stingray? <laughs> yeah, I would get a stingray. <laughs> I would, I would probably, I mean, really, like, who, the, you know, like, talking about missing a wave, whoever was able to legally open a pill mill and just run oxy and opiates through that and not get convicted of anything and just, like, buy a house in West Palm, in Palm Beach, like, would be, West Palm Beach would be insane. I, it was not the, I think it was the Sickler family, and they got caught up just like every other drug dealer. Too loud, bro. Too they loud. Didn't, moving too much the, weight. The only thing that happened to them is they took their name off of like a couple museum wings, like they're fine. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they got to keep a shitload of money too. Yeah, they had to keep all their money. No, nah, they got they got fined. They got they must their have got company fined. got fined. The company got fined. Yeah, no, that's and then like they just declare for you just declare bankruptcy, chapter eleven, and restructure. See, this is why y'all need to pay twenty thousand dollars to get in a room with this man. All right. Not no Zoom, not in a room. <laughs> not in a room no, it's, over it's, it's Zoom. Twenty k, fifteen minute Zoom meeting. <laughs> Three to, uh, well, once a week. Once a week. Yeah. Damn. Five, wow. Or yeah, if you have five k for a while, I guess fifty five because you get a discount. I'm like let's four. let's remove let's uh, review your pill mill business model. Mm, yeah, I've always wondered actually about this though, like where like oxycontin, like where does the opiates come from for oxycontin? Like how do they actually like I, I've looked this up, you can't really find it on the internet. Like what are the logistics of actually producing like a, a, a commercial grade opiate? Like they have to be growing poppies somewhere. They can't produce it completely synthetically. I heard they're in Afghanistan. I was actually gonna say that. Well, I wonder if that has anything to do with like the because I, I heard it was in spain but I, that would make a ton of sense to like basically like contract like blackwater to grow it for you you know because they're 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 holding territory in like afghanistan yeah okay that makes sense i mean i don't i don't know i always thought it was just producing a fucking vat in a lab or something no i think it i think it comes from like like poppies uh, like initially and then it gets refined down like even like medical grade cocaine isn't made synthetically. It's made like the fuck, where do they got that? At? They use it. Um, it's actually used to numb your <laughs> eyes when they do eye surgery. Oh, damn! I need to find an optometrist. I know. I want to fucking. <laughs> I want to. They have like the, the, like my man in L.A. was like he's like he gets like the snifters where it's like blow spray and it's like you know, like a saline solution. You like that's fucking genius. Someone was telling me that, like, because apparently rich people have been doing this for forever, and my man was telling me that, like, in 2012 down here, there was, like, a really rare, like, strain of, like, bird flu that most people couldn't get, but since they were sticking the shit up their noses and sharing them, like, every dude downtown who was doing, who like, was known for doing blow, like, caught the bird flu and was, like, out of commission for, like, a month. The bird flew from doing blow. Yeah. Bird, from, bird flew from the bird. It's crazy. The bird? Is that what you call blow? The bird. Like a bird. I've never heard of that. Yes, you have. Did you, it, oh, like oh, like buying a bird. Yeah. Oh, like a kilo, a kilo of cocaine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I've always wondered about that. I guess it's kind of where my head is. Yeah, hey, I I really don't know because I mean, my entire life, you know, I've have steered very clear of any type oh. of like what, opioid opiates? or like. Yeah, benzos. I mean, I was I'm pretty not strung benzo. out on Roxy's when I was like 21 or 22, but. Well, it was, I think benzos are a lot more fun. We talked about this. Why were you dealing with the trauma of what happened in, to you when you were 11? <laughs> Still deal with that. <laughs> that girl peed on you? No, it didn't happen to me. <laughs> sure, sure. Fine. I dig, I think I got sucked off the first time I was 11. Oh. The first time when I was 11, though. See, that's something that has got to be bleeped out <laughs> and cut out. 
sorry. That, this talking about what he just said is that's going to make it in, but things like that are going to get cut out. Why? I don't care if that comes out. I don't think, I don't, I don't know if we can talk about that. What, getting sucked off? I think we're fine to talk about that. That's like normal, that's grown folks stuff. <laughs> <laughs> grown folks business, but that's not a grown. Fo- that was not a grown folks situation. Yeah, well, the person who did it was much more grown than I was at the time. She How was like, she was in like tenth grade. What? <laughs> what? Dog, you must have been the man. Uh, I still am. Facts. Shit, twin. <laughs> that's facts. That's facts. That's facts. That's fucking facts. Thinking about that, I don't even want to. I don't even want to get into that anymore. I don't want to. Let's. Like, I will tell you that those airplane bottles were involved. <laughs> were they? <laughs> All right. Oh shit! What you know, else do we have to talk about here? I, I had so many other topics to like speak on, but like that just entire thing is like throwing me for a crazy <laughs> loop, and like it's this white slate back there. Now I can't even think oh, of really? anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't got much for you. You know, I'm I, I'm more of like if you're Howard, I'm Robin. You know, I'm just here to facilitate. I'm like, oh yeah. Let me see your toes. Let me see you spread your toes. <laughs> <laughs> Quentin, yeah. that's what that's the type of shit that he fucking be on. He always be like, so well, uh, like like asking like really <laughs> yeah. granular questions yeah, about like, sexual things. So like, what does it smell like? Like, yeah, it'd be like a woman who's like like an astrophysicist. He'd be like, have you ever done anal? <laughs> And Beetlejuice is like, ah. <laughs> yo, shout out to Beetlejuice, by the like, way. Would you have sex with Beetlejuice? And they're like, well, no. no. <laughs> Beetlejuice is doing pretty well for someone in his position. What is he doing? <laughs> I mean, he's like, he's a productive member of society. How <laughs> do you know that? I follow him on Instagram. Really? He has an Instagram? Yeah, hold on. Yeah, let's uh, see. Do you think Beetlejuice owns property? That's actually what I was going to get to next. Does he have a house? I wonder if he's a homeowner. Yeah, I feel like he probably is. He's probably like a multimillionaire because Howard Stern is like You think up. Howard be putting his people on? Oh, for sure. For sure. I think like all of those dudes are like kind of like rich now and they all have Maybe like money. Maybe he No, it's, it's Beetle Pimp. He has three million followers. Damn. That's a hard And har- there's that a picture a of him handle. holding, a photoshopped of him holding, wearing a togo. Uh, holding a torch in front of the Eiffel Tower, saying, getting it started, um, three American flag emojis, art by at somebody, 29,000 likes, posted a day ago, 153 comments. Top comment is, uh, cup of torches being held. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that has something to do with like the thing that people like Beetlejuice for. Cup of. Yeah. I, th- I think he might actually be a homeowner. Now he's on the beach, bro. Where is he? He like, must have like a good Italy financial advisor. I, I, I mean, he is. Um, he had a mental deficiency, did he not? Um, I believe so. Yes, I think. I think Howard Stern like rounded up a bunch of like retards. I wasn't gonna say that, but people with mental handicaps, and then he got them onto the show, and then he like made money. Off of the show, and he gave them money. Yeah, like they're, like they're they, paid. They ate with him. Like, yeah, he, I saw. I saw a picture. He was on the beach. That shit looked like yeah, Italy, bro. Yeah, when he you eat, fucking, your team eats, right? Yeah, yeah, no, he was up, bro. He was fucking making that shit. Like, uh, well, I, I also don't really trust these, but it says he's worth two hundred k. But you also have to keep <laughs> in mind a mortgage is taken against your net worth, so he could own like a million dollar home. Mm. You know, he's probably making payments on something. Oh. Where did they film Howard Stern? Like, I, I for some reason I feel like it was in like Atlantic City. It's in it's in New York. Okay, it's been in New Do York. You think I Beetlejuice think Beetlejuice is a New Yorker. What's up? I looked it up. There's nothing that says he's like mentally like. Yeah, he's. I don't. He, is he just like like ugly? Yeah, like he has like like, like a birth de- defects, but yeah, mentally. I think he's fine. Uh, Do you think he's fine or he's just like <laughs> not like? <laughs> Fair, he's playing like a character. I feel like if I seen Beetlejuice and was like, "Hey, Beetlejuice, you so crazy!" I'm like, yo, kid, back up. I would, I, <laughs> I would love to see like Beetlejuice be like, "Bro, like, could you please chill the fuck out, sir? Like, get away from me." Yeah, I don't, I don't know. You know, I would like to see what his SAT scores were. What if he's like a genius? This has all just been like a, a fucking. Game. I mean, he's a marketing genius. I love Beetlejuice. Yeah, I mean, he's got three million followers. Yeah. He's not if he's not monetizing the three million followers. I don't think those are followers. real followers. He only got twenty nine thousand likes on that picture of him in front. If I posted that picture of me in the Apple Tower, I might get twenty nine thousand. Uh, how, how many? How many? <laughs> <laughs> what? 
<laughs> I love the confidence, but <laughs> it's a good picture. Let me see. Let me see the picture again. <laughs> I'm gonna put this shit up in the background. This shit go crazy. It's only been up for a day. Um, that's so hard. He's, there's a picture of him dressed as Don King with the caption "When I let my hair grow in," and he has a large <laughs> Don King wig on that looks like a candle wick. But they film in New York, bro. They're all they all live in. <laughs> that's terrifying. Do you think they live in New York? I think what so. What borough do you think, Be- or do you think Beale just lives in Jersey to avoid income tax? I I'm actually not sure where he lives. Um, his name's Lester. Tracks. Uh, he was a member of Stern's Whack Pack. He was also named the greatest Whack Packer of all time in 2015. Um, he's from uh, he's from Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. So New York, NYC metropolitan area. Yeah. Um. What? Are, who else was in the Whack? Pack? I don't know. Uh, I will say Howard Stern was like always the shit that would come on like E T V super come late. On e after like eleven. Mm. Also, have we talked about B E T uncut yet? No, I thought we were gonna okay. do that in a product video, but we can talk about it now. I think it would make more sense to talk about it here. Because mm. that was speaking of me being like eleven, that was pretty like formative. <laughs> If we're talking about fuck like like things that I shouldn't have been doing as an 11, 12 year old, like watching BET Uncut is another one of those things. You just like wake up in the middle of the night, see that we'd uncensored stay up big smoking, pippin. We'd stay up smoking <laughs> weed, and then fucking tip drill would come on, and he'd swipe the credit card through the girl's ass. Or there were like a number of songs that were like that really aren't even on like streaming or anything, or like weren't. I don't. I, I want to know the economics of this because there were a lot of songs that like weren't really released anywhere except BT Uncut. Like, I ain't got no panties on. Um, there's the one where the dude, the music video, it was called like Let Me Smell It or something. <laughs> And the music video was a guy like women would come up and his hand would go below screen and he would do the smell his finger and then no. let them in the club based on their odor. Um, there was. Uh, What's that song? It's like, dun, 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 dun. There was one with that were called White Lines where the dude, I wrote a, uh, actually I wrote a, a page about it and a paper about it in night <laughs> And, um, yeah, so there was that. There, like, But I Ain't Got No Panties On was always my favorite. I'll Put t- them panties off! I'll tell you what the economics are, bro. You and the Brodies get a bunch of liquor, and then you get a no, bunch of like, girls naked. Like, who, I mean, <laughs> yeah. That's, like, that's, that's funny because, like, I'm pretty sure, like, Tip Drill was the only, like, one that was, like, high budget that was made specifically for that. Like, it was, like, a BET uncut, like... It was never fi- shown anywhere else, I would imagine. I mean, that's On valid. TV, on, like, network television. Yeah. That's- I'm sure it was shown, you know, on, like, a screen at a strip club. When they played it, I mean, where else would it be? Yeah, where else would it be shown? There's no fucking like X and XX or fucking X hamster or fucking Pornhub or something. The fucking. Uh-huh. I wonder if they like because that I I've, I've been in places before in my life. I don't have like a specific memory, but like being places where they have like a local cable access TV. You're like in a hotel scrolling, and they have like there'll be like a cable access TV where it's like them talking about like them showing local music videos. Really? Like I bet you it's so cold and the D was on there, or like mm. is that the same type of thing? Like channel like. 2A or something. Yeah, exactly. Where it's like, it'll be a. channel 2, and then you hit a. channel 2, and it's still channel 2, but it's a different channel. Exactly. And it'll be, yeah, I've seen that before in like in like major metropolitan Where areas. do you submit it? You send it to the horny nigga department at fucking BET. <laughs> <laughs> under Attention the, H&D? Yeah, like, like right underneath the horny the horny vice president. Well, like Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I would fucking wake up in the middle of the night and fucking see that shit on, and I'd be like, bro, what? We would love that shit, dude. We thought it was so fucking funny. <laughs> dog, back in the day, dog, all you fucking had access to was late night cape that late night fucking infomercials, the girls gone wild I infomercials. I was so close to buying a Ronco rotisserie the other day off eBay. What the fuck is that? That's like an infomercial? Of, yeah. It was it's a rotisserie, but you can cook chickens on your shit. You See, said, I'm talking about something completely like, different. You're talking about porno. I'm talking girls about gone wild. Yeah. I I feel like those poor girls were being taken. It's not. It's, it's not. It's not like cool now. I don't, I don't think they were mean to go that wild. I don't think so either. Yeah. But I mean, it did happen. Some, was what, was it one of y'all? Somebody told me recently that they were like, oh, like this dude I know. Who the fuck told me this? Someone recently was like, yo, this dude I know. <laughs> I remember who told me this. This my man was like, yo, this dude I work with. He's a young cat. He's like one of my friends is a little bit older. He's like, he's a young cat. He's like 20. His mom's bad, but she was on Girls Gone Wild and shit. <laughs> <laughs> 
That is fucking sick. I was like, oh, mama's going. <laughs> I think I think with that we should I think we should just stop it there. Okay. okay. I think we should just stop it there. Uh Nasty Work Podcast. Uh at OG Luke Mook. Uh at at Tokyo Drift 420. Um we're, uh, we're open up in LA. What's the what's the uh, address? August 3rd, 8012 and a half Melrose. 8012 and a half, bro. Yeah. We're there. Uh, at Luke's NYC, YouTube, Spotify, Title, uh, Apple Music, um, BET on Cut. Frame FM or the Anchor FM or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Someone take a picture of us also.